Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are live at Exotica, Chicago. And I am so excited to have the lovely Joanna Angel with me. Hello. Hi, Alexis. It's so good to see you. Hi. Welcome to Exotica, Chicago, Private Talk Edition. We are having a fun time. Uh, this is the first episode, so you're popping my cherry. Woo! And, um, you know, oh, not really? very many people actually. The first episode at Exotica. At Exotica, Whoa! Chicago. So I feel like, you know, you popped, or I think I popped your cherry when I, like, put my ass in your face and like yes. got stuck in a window mm, you know yes. so it's the same but different it's, but you it's know the same thing yeah I you know it's one of those things that we don't get to see each other all the time uh, exoticos are one of those things that bring us all together so I think it's a really fun to see everybody selling seeing what kind of merchandise you have what has been one of your favorite things about the show this year I haven't actually been to Chicago Exotica in a couple years um, I mean the fans in Chicago are great um, it, sure. It's been, and actually, this Friday, I think, was more women than I've ever seen at any other show. Ladies' Night it was, was definitely popping. Ladies' Night was popping. I saw so many bachelorette parties. Um, so I think there was just, like, very good energy do at this show. Do you feel like so your fan base is more female-dominant, or do you think that you get a little bit of a mixture of both? Um, honestly, no. no I, I don't have more of a, a female... Um, like driven scene. I mean, do any of us have more females? Oh, I, say, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. really either. It's one of those things um, that's something I feel like we work really hard to do is because we know we're sexy women. We like to right. watch porn ourselves. Well, we do it. But it's like, you know, the crossover, I sometimes feel like it's more intimidating for them, but it's like, we love you all. Yeah. I, a, a lot of couples like yeah. my stuff, though. So we, I do get a lot of couples. I think it's cool, I feel like, with, when the women do come out to situations like this to see them, you know, participating because I feel like that's where it's like, you know you watch it. You oh, know you yeah. like it, girl. So it's well, like, more tell women us a are bit watching more. porn now than ever. You know, that's definitely. Um, we definitely had a lot of women come to see my husband, so that's pretty cool. So, how is that um, having a, you know your husband? You you know you made him actually in a performer. Yeah. He was you know you guys started you know I've followed you all I've known you forever. Yeah. So it's one of those things. It's like you know girl talk catching up, but you know bringing your husband, making him a performer, letting him kind of excel into that kind of spotlight. Now, yeah. Now which, we're, we're, now he's his own his own brand how on is his that, own. You know, is that know? kind a of, lot feel? of Some people come and they don't even know we're together. Is you it know? like stage mom? Like when he won his award, when he was like you know in the limelight? Like how is that aspect of being part of you know his, I mean, his career from his start to like now it, it's been a whirlwind you know like um, I think it was exciting it was unexpected I mean this kind of started and, and took off a lot quicker than we all thought it would you know this wasn't like uh, this turned out from a from a thing where he was just kind of helping me where he's like hey I'll shoot you know I'm like just shoot for me and with me because it'll help and his name and his you know his uh, his, his brand penis. or whatever, his <laughs> penis, it just sort of exploded uh, quicker than we thought. It's really been like crazy. It almost feels like I blinked and it all happened. But um, uh, everything's been really incredible. Um, but I do think after many years, we needed to like almost take time to reconnect with one another. Because there is like just in all honesty, I felt like I kind of donated my husband to the world. Um, and, um, you know, after like seven years, like COVID was the first time we both actually got a chance to slow down and we were both like, we need to like kind of reconnect again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and we both felt the same way. Um, so That's I think awesome. that, that made us both kind of take a, a step back from things. Um, and um, yeah, but, but I'm so fortunate and, and we're both so like, it, it's such a privilege and um, a blessing to have fans in this industry, you know, like For the fans sure. are so good to me. They're so good to him. Um, and because of the fans we have and the way that the industry went, like we can spend more time with each other. We don't have to be on set all the time. Yeah. We, can, we can do so many things and we can um, pursue our other interests and still be able to have a foot in this industry. And it's just been really uh, amazing. I, I, it's very, very fortunate place That's to be in. That's awesome. I feel like it's really good to have awareness. You know, we both come from people that we've also been with performers prior to, but having someone that you kind of like, not necessarily groomed because it was something that he did and it kind of happened naturally, but like it you said, it's very like, naturally, where it was yeah. like you gave, you know, you kind of gave your husband up, but it's like, did you ever feel any like jealous moments in those times where maybe, not that he was getting more attention than you, but where you said like the reconnection is like, was it because he was working too much? Is there ever a play where it's like, hey, how do you, do you have boundaries with 
within the, with, within the industry? Oh yeah, look, the boundaries are pretty simple. Um, the boundaries, and, and I don't even like to call them boundaries, you know? But I feel but like people think boundaries is such a bad thing, but I think I it's just sometimes the standards and checklists of things that help healthy relationships like yourself, where it's like, sometimes you just need to see what you're comfortable with and your partner to yeah. make you still be a partnership. Right, yeah. I mean, and, and there was never even too much of a big talk about it because me, the one thing is like, my husband and I, we always wanted the same things. When one person wants something and one person doesn't want something, that's when like a lot of the talks have collide, to happen. Yeah. And, and a lot of times those talks don't even work. If somebody wants something and the other person doesn't want it, like uh, the, the amount of talking and rules, like, yeah. you know, ultimately a person's gonna do what they want. But I mean, look, you go to work and anything work is fine. You know, I always said the minute the girl steps on set, that's that that's when the scene starts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like uh, that's honest. you know, just it's on, healthy for sure. On set slash on camera, fine. You know, off camera, off set, not fine. You know, I mean, that's that's basically Cut been dry. what it is. And then you know, there have been times where we've done stuff together, but uh, he doesn't like. I guess we're not really like in an open relationship. Yeah. But that would be like. He's with other yeah. women on his own. Um, you know, like we will have threesomes. We've been part of like sex parties and orgies and stuff like that. Um, so do you but do together? That? But do together, you in, do you do that in your personal life as well? Uh, yeah, we've done that in our personal life. Um, you know, a couple times. It's not okay. like all the time, yeah. you know. And but I it's will something admit, that you're open to. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We we don't care, you yeah. know. Like, but I I think now um, once I th I felt like we did that more in our earl in the yeah. earlier stage of relation, and once like. It was harder for us to spend time together. Like the time we were spending together, we didn't want to be in a threesome or an orgy. You know what sure. I mean? So it's intimate time. It's you time, and I think it's important. Yeah. I think that it's really. I've always respected y'all's relationship is because you can really see that you guys grow together. And it is was one of those things where I said it's come very natural. Where I feel like your alignments have been aligned from the beginning where it's yeah. like you know there was never been a miscarriage where you're like oh that's i never thought he would do this where it's like no it never, was very yeah. so much very you know supportive and so i feel like that that's kind of what makes relationships kind of excel especially in this business which you hear all the time we're like oh how long have you been together oh it won't last long so there's all these stigmas around porn you know relationships and things like that so i really commend you guys for being really honest with each other and you yeah. know still committing to each other especially in times like this when we don't know what's going to happen you know right. you said the pandemic no, look, it was a, a scary thing. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. You know, it's like well, a lot of changes. Strong, yeah, sexy female. Strong, you know, and I, I'm really glad that me and him were together for like two years before he got in the yeah. industry. You know, because we had like a foundation completely outside of this. So I think a lot of times when you meet someone in the industry, it's almost like two personas are meeting each other. For sure. And you don't even realize it because you're never turning off. So yeah. we had a whole life before the industry, and awesome. um, yeah. But it's it's been it's it's been something you know. Um, awesome. But it's been great now. Like we you know living in New York and he's been working on his music career and DJing and he still does shoot sometimes. But it's not every day. It's more like compartmentalized. You okay. know, like doing five seven days in LA. You know, with Brazzers or with uh, Owen, his his lovely friend Owen. That they have a special relationship, so he'll do that. I'll go out and shoot for like a week and then I come so home. So it's it's been nice where it's like I'm at home. I don't have to think about it much. And then when I'm yeah. out, it's like... Like work is yeah. work. Yeah. Home is home. Yeah. I like that. So what can we find on your OnlyFans? Are you only shooting for your OnlyFans? Are you shooting for other companies uh, still? Look, what are I, you up to, Mr. Anna Angel? look, I never... I, it's funny. People always expect... Like, I never stopped anything. I did a scene for Bang Bros just a couple weeks ago. I did a scene for Brazzers a couple months ago. Okay. You know, so I, I've still done a handful of studio scenes. Just, you know, if I feel like doing it or if, if the right opportunity comes up or I happen to be in the right city at the right time. For sure. Um, but yeah, I shoot a, a whole bunch of stuff for my OnlyFans. I update all the time. I have, you know, all the same things I've always done. I've got boy, girl, girl, girl with my husband, with my husband and other girls, people who are not my husband. You know, I do solos, J.O. I, I do, you know, I do it all. Live You're shows. open to it all. Private I'm open talk. to it all. You better be yeah. subscribed to something that she has. Watch everything that she's doing because, exactly. you know, she's a sexy, sexy lady. I mean, I have I got to subscribe to your OnlyFans. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do.
So being in the business for as long as you have, is there anybody that you have not worked with and then you possibly maybe want to? Do you have a wish list? How does that kind of work? Are you I just know, kind of just like right? a free for all? And like, there's so many new people now. And there's so many new people that I don't even know their names. Like when you walk I by the know. booth and I'm like, you're hot. What's your? And then like, and they're like, they've been in the business for seven years. I'm like, where have I been? I'm right, like, I've but never to heard. you, seven years is new. You're like, oh, so you're new. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing is like, there's classifications, I think, of the porn world and people don't understand that until you're in it for as long as us. But you know, hey, to each his own. I like love women empowering women and doing what we love and having platforms that we can create and give the fans what we want. Yeah. I just don't know them all yet, but that's also why I came back to Exotica's was because this is where you get to meet everybody. It is, and you get to see everyone. I mean, I don't know. I, I reach out to a lot of people, and I've been pretty fortunate. I've been able to work with so old you're sliding and new. in the DMs. There, yeah, I do. You know, there's a lot of people making a lot of great content. I don't know if everybody saw. I had a new scene I did recently. There's a guy. He came to America. His name, he goes by the name Girthmaster. Never Girth done Master, a studio okay. scene or anything. His dick is, it's, it's, I, it's the biggest white penis I've ever seen. So, like, is it like the liquid death can? It is, yeah. I think it's Did you bigger. compare? You should have done it side by side. I know, side. I should have done it side by side. Liquid I mean, death. It was you know? liquid it's more death. than just the water. Yep. It's, it's a the good same barometer, size of girth. yeah. <laughs> of Girthmaster. Yeah, it's a good, it's a measuring tape for yeah. penises, you know? Like, if it's. Fuck the remote yeah. control. Put your dick by the liquid death can. See how big it is. See how girthy it can be. Yep, exactly. <laughs> So um, did you, why, what, what about that scene did you like? Because it was so thick? I mean, yeah, it was really thick. And also, he's, he's just such a nice person. And okay. also, there was actually something like his, he's never been on a porn set or anything. He's just a guy that, like, I think he worked in some IT, something like okay. that. I, um, and he just had a regular job. And, I, and at some point, he started in OnlyFans, and it just kind of exploded from Australia. So he, he's still very much like... Like, uh, like he, there was like, like an innocence about him. It's like the him. excitement, like a little kid of like waking up at Christmas when you're yeah. like, who's coming to set now? Who's coming to the set now? Right, I know. And um, I miss those days. You know? He was so excited, but like so professional and so nice. And like, it's almost like he just like, you know, it's like he just accidentally has this giant penis, you know? Accidentally. And, um, That's a good so accident. So it, it was really fun. And, you know, I, I actually like it. Like when I work with some of these you know, I don't know, content creators and, and they're big fans of mine. It's like, uh, it's an, it's exciting, you know, and they're like nervous, but like, does it ever go like nervous in a bad way? Cause I remember you know, back I in the day. I haven't had that happen okay. yet where they're, I, I look, I, I, that has happened to me on set actually. Cause um, to me, I'd always be like, oh, they're like, I'm your biggest fan. I'm like, oh, right. this is going to be a bad day. Yeah. Not because they weren't excited, but they were got no, too no, I excited. Know, the penis. Yeah. yeah the, we need yeah. the penis to work, Private Talk. So far, anyone I've worked moment. with that's been kind of like a fan, like an OnlyFans creator, and then they, they have sex with me. I actually feel like the scene is really good because you. I'm like, okay. They came to sit prepared. I love it. It's like they're like really putting everything into this. And it's, like it's exciting you for lay, me. You lay it all. It feels no like I'm stay. a kooky old lady like making my rounds, like going on tour and like so boning all the, uh, <laughs> all the new people. One thing I love about you two is you're not only a porn star, but you're also a business entrepreneur yourself. And you've well, thank been you. You know, such a good job about doing... I mean, your business the way you are. There's you've you had booths, you've had all you know your own company. What's some advice that you could give to some newer girls that are coming into the business and starting? Whew. Where you do know, I start? I know, right? It is hard. Look, uh, everybody's career is different. You have to make it your own way. You can't. I know this industry can be hard because you're coming in at the same time as a lot of other people, and everybody works at different paces. You know, it might. And me personally, it took me. 10 times as long to get half as far as everybody else, you know? And and that's okay, you have to enjoy this, you have to enjoy the journey, um, and just listen to yourself, you know? And don't compare yourself to other people, like you can't do that, that's when you start to get dark, um, you know? Be creative, like, like uh, go follow your instincts, mm. you know? Your instincts know what to do. For sure. And if your instincts are telling you this isn't right for you, follow those also. I mean, this industry isn't for everyone. I mean, it's for sure. it is entertainment after all, and entertainment can be cutthroat. It can be you know competitive, it, and it's it, entertainment's not fair. You know, porn is, sure. doesn't have to be fair. Um, that life isn't fair. Life isn't you know, fair. I think that it's sometimes true. again, it's that's the you know keeping up with what's in your own lane. I think that, you know, yeah. there's no, the comparison is like, you know, look at where we're at. We're exotic as Chicago. There's million, you know, not millions, yeah. hundreds of booth theaters of people going and do their own thing. But uniquely, we're all, it is, you know, our own thing. And I feel like we have something to give to the fans. Yeah, we do. So, so just listen to I, yourself. Listen you know to what yourself, you're doing. private Listen talk. to yourself. 
Do you have any crazy fan interactions? Maybe not at the convention, but just in general throughout your career. Is there anything that kind of sticks out in your mind that you can tell us about? Okay, so over COVID is what the first time I opened myself up to doing custom videos. Okay. And, and wow, it's been, uh, my fans are very... Creative? Creative, yeah. Especially, I think, over COVID when nobody was leaving. Like, everybody was coming up with these really, like, interesting scenarios. So what would scenarios. be the craziest fetish type of request I mean, did you get? Or I guess I didn't even say wanna, fetish, no, but I just... I did a crazy custom, and it took all day to do. I can try to sum it up. Okay. So there's a guy, we'll just call him Jay. You know? Okay. Uh, he, he used to send me, he, you know, I, I do dick ratings. Mm -hmm. So he did, like, a, a dick rating, and he, he, would, he actually he had a giant, beautiful cock. Um, I get wet to some of those dick right? ratings. I'm like, yeah, man, where, where are you? So uh, he, he would get the dick ratings pretty often, and he'd always get a 10. Because it really, and he was uh, in the military. So okay. it was kind of hot. I would see him in his, like, 10, you know, whatever. And he'd always be, like, jerking off. He would use my flashlight. You know, he'd be, like, jerking sexy, off the porn to me. So I was always rating it. Anyway, it went from, like, dick rating, dick rating, you know, whatever. And then suddenly he's like, I have this fantasy. And I'm like, tell me. And he's like, and I want you to reenact it. And I... I, I wasn't yes, sure what right was away. coming. So I don't even know how to sum this up. This was like a multi-part. This was like a feature length custom. You better have got a really, yeah, I know, really right? good cost so for that. So basically, part of his fantasy was that, I, you know, I saw his cock. He got the dick rating. And then I took it a step further in this fantasy. I was like, I have to have him. I have to have him. I can't take, wait another minute without him. So I, br I go to like his military base and I break... I break into it. Ooh, so I also I reenacted this whole custom. So I was shooting like um, in my yard where I was like jumping over a fence, you know, at night with a dedication, flashlight. You know, I like I, that. I get, anyway, I break into him and I, I I find his tent. So I'm walking around the military base at night, like like Jay, where are you? So did you put Jay? tents up in your backyard? What? Did you put tents up I, in your I, backyard? I got a tent. And I put one in my living room. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I, it was all dark. Yeah. Like it. Anyway, and then I find it and I find his tent and I'm like Jay. I need your cock. I have to have it. And he's like, no, like, I'm going to be in trouble. And he's like, yes. And then anyway, I, like, get on top of him, and I ride him and stuff. I did this all with, like, a, a dildo. It, this was very intricate, okay? And then I like I, like, it. Ride the dildo, more, and then part of tell it, basically. Me more. Yes, tell, I'll tell you more. So basically, uh, he tries to push me off of him, and I'm like, no, I'm going to keep going, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, he comes inside of me. I did it Naturally. with a squirting dildo. Yeah, it comes inside of me. Um, and then like I, I'm like okay let, let me take you out of here and I I take him away there's part two where I'm pregnant with his baby I actually got like a pregnant I wasn't like you know yeah, I wasn't you weren't expecting, expecting that. that right I'm pregnant with Jay's baby so I can't so you got a fake belly I did yeah I got a fake belly <laughs> to do that so I'm pregnant with him his baby and um, while I'm pregnant with him I can't <laughs> and he's not in the military anymore and I can't go. I can't go to work. I can't do porn, you know, because I'm pregnant. Because you're pregnant. Yeah, because I'm pregnant. So what do I have to do? I have to train Jay to do porn. <laughs> so at okay, the end of okay. day, I was like, Aaron, I think this I'm guy's like, fantasy is to be Aaron, <laughs> kind of, you know, like he wanted. And so as There's part synergy of it, for sure. I invite my friends over, and he listed which friends. I invite my friends over, and I sit there with like a director, like clapper thing, <laughs> and I teach him how to fuck. My friends, all my porn star friends, you know, exactly. I teach him okay. how to do it so he could go do porn so he could support the family. <laughs> I'm and then dead. on the la the end of the custom ended with me being like, all right, you're ready. And I like, I'm like, it's, it's, it's like your day. And, I, and I'm in the car and I, I drop him off at set. So I film the end of it in the car where I'm like driving, you know, and I'm like, all right, sweetie. And I'm like, this is all me with a phone. I'm like, have a good day. <laughs> How long is this fucking custom, Jay? It's 20 minutes. Okay. It's 20 okay, minutes. Okay, okay. It took me like two days to film. I'm like, because you were a director yeah. and had your own company, I yeah. feel like it's a little bit. Oh, this was also during COVID. Yeah. Well, you had so, some time on your hands. Fortunately, and I had my husband to help me, you know, which is good. Uh, but yeah, I was like going to Home Depot and buying things. They're like, like what is wrong with this? Where did you find this pregnant belly? I'm on like, Amazon. <laughs> did you, what did you do with it after? Do I want to know? You know. You should have. You went get, in the garage with You should sell it out. to Jay for a low, low I price. I should have. Like, here you go. Here's your baby, Jay. Yeah, here's yeah, here's your, your baby. <laughs> so that was, I think, one of the most interesting things I ever did for a fan. And you know, I loved. I thought it was a beautiful story. I was, I was like, say, this should actually I love, be. A, 
that you were so at the end interactive. Of the day, he he wanted a family, you know. <laughs> hey, he got that fake family from you, girl. I love it. I mean, I think that it's cool to like really give back to your fans, and yeah. some's a little bit more intricate than others. But that if you're willing to intricate. do it and like give it back, then I loved why it. not? I loved it. I How loved it. I, you know, funny. I really loved any every minute of it, and I I really I got into the story. I was teary eyed at the end. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch it back on your own accord? I, yeah, I, I mean, I did before I sent it to him. I had to watch it. You know? But did you masturbate to it? <sighs> you know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I mean, there's some kind of kinky fetish inside There's it. something hot about it, you know? <laughs> what makes you smile, Joanna Angel? Aw, you know, my friends, my fans, good food. I love good food. And every time I leave town and land in the airplane going back to New York. Hey. So I New am. York is home. It's, a, New York it's is always home. one thing that you feel like when you see this, like the airplane thing, it's like, oh. Yeah. It's like, you know, and it's like kicking off your shoes. Be like, yeah. Ah. And when, that, when they say, like, you know, welcome to New York, I, I want to cry every time. Uh -huh. And I'm just so used to, like, li I was used to living in L.A. and going to New York for just a couple days. Yeah. And then leaving. So the, the first time I landed in New York, like, and I was knowing that, like, you this wasn't temporary. You that cried. I was going, yeah. Oh, I And, you know, that. unfortunately, like, even though I had great times and I accomplished amazing things and I wouldn't take it back for anything, L.A. never felt like home. Fair. For whatever reason. Yeah. Um, it just didn't. But, so. I mean, I feel like, you know, especially when, you know, the older we get, the more that you experience, it's like you left home, you, went, you saw what was out there, you yeah. didn't like it, you go back and see. But I feel like, you know, home is, you know, home is where you make home it. Home is home, and, yeah. And home is New York, then home is New York home for you. Home is New York, yeah. But I love that. I feel like, I feel like for me, seeing you on the outside looking in and having really get to see you that much, I feel like you can see how happy you are being in New York, and I feel like, it is your home. It's my home. I mean, yeah. you didn't need to be like that, but me. you know what? Yeah. I feel like it's one of those and things that it's like... everybody says that. They're like, you just seem like like yourself again. Isn't it funny how that works? It's like we work so hard when we were younger. We'd be like, we want to get out of here. We want to get I out know, of here. And then you're I like, know. wait, I want to like, go back. I want to go, go back. back. And, and you know, and it's made me appreciate my times in the industry more. You know, like it's... Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. I love that. All right. Let me ask you a couple more questions. Yeah. Best advice that you've ever gotten? You gave us some advice for private talk out there. I know. To let us know if anybody new was getting into the industry. Did you something that sticks out in your mind? What kind of the best advice that you've ever gotten? What is the best advice that I've ever gotten? I mean, I feel like I just gave the advice. So, okay, so, I, you live, you know, so you live by what that was, that code yeah, somewhere lying yeah, yeah. in there. I, do you remember early on, somebody told me to trust your instincts. Okay. So there I was regurgitating their advice. But you know, that advice... It's that funny how it works, was right. right? I know. Yeah. Full circle. Full circle. Right? What are some three rules that you abide by in life? Do you have a code of conduct when you do things or you just go like, whatever okay. the fuck happens? And you know what? Every time I've gone back on these, I get mad at myself. So never apologize for something you're not sorry for. Important. I think women, we do that all the time. We so are people always pleasing. saying sorry. Um, uh, don't ever do anything just for the money. You know, if money is the only thing coming out of it, it's not worth it. There should be money in something else. And if that just means money and, and you're having fun, money and career, I don't know, whatever. Don't ever do anything where it's just the only um, good is money. All right. I think, um, yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't know. Don't do anything that makes you cringe. Don't do anything cringe. My thing is, like, if it doesn't cringe, make my pussy wet, yeah, I'm not doing it. Exactly. If it's food, if it's something that exactly. I'm talking to, it's Trust a Trust yourself. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Who was your first celebrity crush? Did you have any posters on your wall growing up? Is oh. there someone that kind of like sticks out to I you that you like kind of like maybe did some naughty things and been like, mm. Um She's like, like where Trent, do I start? Yeah. Trent Reznor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, oh, earlier than that. Um. Brett Michaels, mm. yeah, Brett Michaels. I was, I was very, Wrestling very big. Fan? Yeah. No, no, uh, from Poison. Oh, like that, Brett oh, Michaels. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm like, oh, when I, you know, so I was like really obsessed with hair metal, and yeah, even and Tommy Lee also. Okay. Like, yeah, I would watch Motley Crue videos when I was. Did you younger. ever date somebody with the long hair? I have dated somebody with longer hair. Not that long, though. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I have. It's like I, I, always I love remember. hair metal guys growing up. <laughs> it reminds me of like Evan. Stone whenever like back in the days yeah. like with his long hair is like eating pussy it's like it's like a 80s hair band music exactly you know, it's like going everywhere whipping in the wind <laughs> I loved it yep. yep have you ever reached out to any of your celebrity crushes or vice versa since being in the industry oh yeah I have yeah 
Have you fucked I any of them? I can't say who they were. You have to tell us. Yeah, I fucked I, all of them. All of them. All <laughs> of them. That's not my, my not girl. Not Michaels, but no. Okay. <laughs> not, not, not crushes I had when I was like a little girl. Okay. But yes, I had other celebrity crushes. Okay, okay. And I fucked most of them. That one, uh, one or two years I was single. That a girl. I was like, let me see what I can do. With hey, this, maybe with maybe this I should blue take check. some notes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just, But you now know. a blue check isn't really that matter Yeah, now the anymore. blue check doesn't matter. But yes, at that time, I was like, okay, let's see what, yeah. When and is I, the I last okay. time you had sex, Joanna? Ooh. Um, <laughs> yesterday. Ooh. Was it with your husband? <laughs> yeah, I was with my husband. Oh, you're Quickie like, yes. before the convention. Hey, sometimes you got to let that, you know, let it out. Let yes. the poison out before you can have some good, real good time. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let us know where we can support you, where we can follow you, all of those great things. Uh, Onlyvans.com slash Joanna Angel. You can follow me on Instagram, Joanna Angel. Twitter, Joanna Angel. Joanna TikTok, fucking Joanna Angel. Joanna Angel X. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for taking Thank your you, time Alexis. in Chicago you are, Exotica. You are amazing, Alexis. Thank you. It always makes me, every time I walk past your booth and I see everything, I'm like, fuck yeah. You have always been like such a badass, really. Oh, like, I, I appreciate you're amazing. You. Um, Is there anything you would like to ask Miss Texas before we get off the show? When do we get to hang out? Ooh, well, you know, I told you my secrets, you know, so I may be coming to New York very soon. Yeah. And I will dabble in your pond so you can okay. show me a good time. Let's do it. All right, I love it. Like Thank cheers. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Private Talk. I hope you enjoyed this interview from Chicago Exotica. Until we meet again. This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.